Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. We're in lockdown at the minute and um, I hope you're all doing okay. I think it's a difficult time for everyone. Um, I'm finding it quite difficult as well. I, um, I've been working all year, Monday to Friday, get the weekends off, but I've had only a handful of holidays and without that, uh, something to look forward to and that that getting away and having that switch off time it does get a bit uh does get a bit tiring sometimes but anyway we've got to get on with it so a few of you have been asking me about the kit that i use and i thought today i'd talk about my sleeping bag systems it's november now and i've actually been wild camping for four years uh four years in december my first wild camp was up in um, the Lake District, Sergeant Mann it was, I think it's about 2,300 feet. And before then, I'd not done any wild camping at all. So when I was looking for a camping system, I needed something that'd be good in winter because I'd seen all the pictures on the, on the internet of tents up in the mountains in winter in the snow and I... I was really, I really fancied doing that. It looked like a real great adventure. So that was, that was where I got started. Really, that was got, what got me into it. Um, so I had to get uh, myself some winter kit together. Uh, I had no real experience. I'd, I'd never done anything like that before. So I went on all the uh, forums and the Facebook groups, watched YouTube videos, all that. Tried to get some knowledge, build my knowledge up, and find out what kit I'd need. Um, I settled on a sleeping bag that's the Rab 900 Ascent. It cost me about, I think I got it from Go Outdoors, it was about 230 quid. Um, and that was four years ago, I plumped for that sleeping bag and I've, I've never regretted it since. I think it's a fantastic bag for me. If you look at the weight, it's about 1,530 grams, I think. So it's, it's quite heavy. Um, it's quite bulky too, but when, when you're in the sleeping bag in winter on snow, you, you, you really do appreciate it. So before we start, I just want to say this is, it isn't an in-depth review. I'm no expert on camping or sleeping bags. I've been doing it four years. I've, I've done about 30, just over 30 camps in total. Most of them have been on my own and it's all self-learnt, but I did sort of throw myself in at the deep end and I have gained that experience on my own and I think the only way to do a lot of these things and get the experience is by going for it, getting out there and, um, and you will make mistakes. You'll fine tune your equipment to suit yourself. What suits me might not suit you. So as I say, this isn't a real recommendation. It's, it's just uh, my own personal thoughts on the equipment that I've got. So let's get into it, the Rab 900 Ascent sleeping bag. So this is what you get. Quite a large storage sack. Let's take it up there. It's important that you, uh, you keep the, the uh, sleeping bags in these when you're not using them so that the down doesn't get uh, compressed it does come in its own stuff sack as well which is there I'll, I'll show you that later it lofts lofts up really nicely this bag once it's been aired for a few minutes it really does loft up nicely now when I was learning about all this stuff, I came across something about what, what sort of sleeper are you? Uh, what does that mean? Um, yeah, are you a side sleeper, a front sleeper, a back sleeper? Uh, well, I'm a side sleeper and this bag I find is, is great if you're a side sleeper. It's a mummy style bag which means it tapers towards the bottom but it's also quite wide and um, when you sleep on your side, for me anyway, my leg my leg tends to stick out like that, one of my legs, and then the other leg goes down the side. So I've, I've tried mummy bags. It's really good if you can get get the shop to let you try the bags out. Um, 
because when I tried a mummy bag, a normal mummy bag, as a side sleeper, it just wasn't comfortable at all. At all. I didn't have that width um, and I just couldn't get comfortable in it. But this this uh, Ascent 900, is, there's plenty of room. I mean, the disadvantages of that is there's a lot of space inside that needs to get warm. Um, but I, I don't find it a problem. I need, I need to be on my side when I sleep or else I just can't get comfortable. So that, it was a priority for me. And what you need to remember about sleeping bags, it may, may sound stupid, but it's something, I, again, I never thought of as a, as a beginner, is that the bag doesn't generate any heat. You generate the heat and you need, the bag just keeps the heat inside. So if you, if you start getting out of the bag in the middle of the night for, uh, to nip to the toilet, the bag starts cooling down immediately. You go outside the tent, you get cold, you come back in, you've got to start the heating process all over again. So I try to uh, really minimize the time I spend out of the bag at night in winter, just to make sure that warmth stays inside the bag. If you're not in the bag, there's no heat being generated and it will get cold. Fortunately, this bag has a nice hood system there. You can draw the cord in quite, quite snugly. There's a large uh, neck baffle so all that heat that you're generating inside the bag, it's just trapped inside and it just keeps it nice and toasty and warm. So if we take a closer look at this bag, you can see it's the RAB Ascent 900. Hydrophobic European Premium Duck Down Pertex Micro Light. You've got a really good hood on, uh, on this and um, there's a draw cord there that you can pull it nice and tight around your head to keep all the uh, the warm air in. Just, uh, just turn the zip down a bit. You can see this big uh, neck baffle there. So when you when you've got all your heat inside the bag, you draw that around you, and it really seals everything in. Pull the hood down, and it keeps you really warm. There's also a nice uh, a nice long zip on this. All the way down there, opens it up. You can unzip it from the bottom up if you want to, if your feet get too hot. Um, you can see, again, you can see the, the baffle, the neck baffle there, and there's a little pocket. Not particularly big, but you can, you can store things in there. If anything like me, everything tends to get lost at night in the tent, in the sleeping bag. up again yeah once you've got that all pulled in you're really toasty really toasty so that's the Rab Ascent 900 sleeping bag fantastic bag I love it but when I started to wow camp and I wasn't camping in winter I thought this is a bit heavy and it's a bit bulky could i get something that's not as warm i don't need it to be as warm in summer a bit lighter a bit less bulky a heavy pack no one enjoys a heavy pack especially when you're carrying it up mountains so if you can lighten that load it just makes it much more enjoyable um, then i looked at the outkit pipe dream 400 so this is the outkit bag and you'll immediately see a difference in the size of the storage bag. Pipe Dream 400. And the weight. I'll take this out. And I find the colour a bit more boring. I'm more of a red person myself. That's the stuff sack for it. I'll show you that later. Now this bag, I'll put the I'll put the links in the description. But this is nearly half the weight of the rab. I think it's 860. 860 grams. Uh, you can feel it. 
and you can um, you can tell with the difference in pack size as well. Um, this bag I tend to use three season. It is a th it is known as a three season bag. Um, if temperatures are going to be above freezing, I'll use this. I've used it down to freezing, but um, if temperatures is going to be uh, consistently below freezing, that's when I'll take the rab. Um, yeah, so I really I really like this bag. Combination of weight, pack size, and price. I think this is about. 220 pounds from Outkit, um, but I got this last year and I've I've used it I've used it a lot. So we'll just take a closer look at the Outkit Pipe Dream 400. You may be able to see from the uh, the video pictures it's it's a lot lighter. It's not as it's not as lofty. Well, there's not as much fill in it as the as the Rab. Um, it's got a small neck baffle there, still got the hood, and it's got the draw cord there so you can you can pull it around you. Good zip. Nice long zip. Again, you can zip that up from the bottom if you want to get your feet out. Um, and there we are. But both of these bags are down filled bags, which means you don't want to get them wet. If you get the down wet, it's heavy. Uh, it can all stick together, so you, you don't want to get the down wet. It's got a hydroscopic coating, I think, that just does resist a bit of water, but it, it's not not much at all. So you need to keep these bags dry. But down is certainly the warmest, and that uh, that's it all zipped up. So the out kit pipe dream 400 right so i've got the uh the sleeping bags in this stuff sack now as you can see i've had to take off my hoodie because i'm sweating you know it's like getting them sleeping bags into the stuff sack stuffing them in so the rab ascent 900 there it is in its stuff sack all packed away that then would go in the bottom of my rucksack the Alp Kit Pipe Dream 400 is there. See the difference in pack size immediately. The difference in weight, I said that's about nearly half the weight of that. But both, in my opinion, for me, they're both great bags. I don't need to take that in summer. I can take that three seasons. In winter, I'll take this. So there's no one sleeping bag for me that, that does all four seasons. Um, there's always going to be a compromise. And if, if just sticking to two bags, I think this is a great choice for me. Your circumstances might be slightly different. So uh, you need to get what best suits your needs. So I hope that's been useful for you. Um, short and sweet, as I say, I'm not an expert on camping, sleeping bags or anything really. I'm just sharing some of my experiences with these two bags um, so I hope you find it interesting and maybe helpful too now while we're talking about keeping warm I just wanted to show you this little device that's been sent to me by a company called Okupa they've uh, they've been watching some of my videos and probably seen me going like this my hands are freezing um, yeah so they've sent me this little hand warmer stroke power bank so we'll take a closer look at that too i've not had chance to use it yet um obviously we're locked down but um first impressions are it's a nice little unit so as you can see it's the okupa rechargeable hand warmer and it's a power bank too you get a little lanyard with it there and there's a charging cable in there and a little uh a little pouch goes inside there that's that's nice so the model of this one is um och01 
capacity 10,000 milliamp hours it's quite simple you just uh, hold that down switch it on and then the heat settings that's one two and three just charge it via USB and um, I've had it on in in the house and just had a try to get a feel for it it feels really nice in the hand um, you can imagine being outside and uh, cold fingers and getting that around getting your hands around that and uh, I can imagine that being really useful it's probably one of them things I've never used anything like this before but I, I can see this being one of them things that you never thought you needed until you try it um, so I'm looking forward to uh, getting that out this winter and uh, keeping my hands warm with it so there's also um, charging points on there and uh, a USB point for charging your uh, your uh, electrical stuff your cameras your phones or whatever um, so a big thanks to a Cooper for sending me that I really appreciate it and I'm looking forward to uh, having a play with that when I'm uh, next out camping so that's it for today's video folks hope you found it interesting um, sorry we can't get out but that's just how it is at the moment can't wait to get back out again there hopefully the lockdown will be finishing in a couple of weeks and maybe we can get out of some sort or other um, I really hope you're keeping well too um, if you've got any questions about any of this stuff get in the comments below it'd be really good to hear from you um, I put some links to the various bits of uh, kit in the description as well so if you want to check out more information about those you can do and uh, until next time keep safe everyone and uh, I'll see you soon bye